out when you sin. You apologize and you repent. You turn away. You don't do it again. And so, oof. Oof. I'm feeling that thing. YouTube video. So in this video, I actually want to talk about how to elevate your spiritual life. Come on now, we're going higher in the Lord today, okay? But before I actually get into the video, if you have not already, hit that subscribe button for you, girl, one time for the one time. Mm -mm -mm. So this actually is a video that the Holy Spirit told me to do about a few weeks ago, and so I'm excited to actually be able to record it. But before I actually um, get into the steps of, that I took to elevate my spiritual life, I did want to give a little bit of history about myself. So I actually grew up in church. So I've always been in church. But the crazy part is, even though I grew up in church, and so I've been in church since I was zero years old, I never really had a relationship with God. And I never really just, I never knew the Bible. I never had a desire to read the word. I and so if I didn't have a desire to read the word, that means I didn't I didn't know how to obey the word. So I was just kind of you know doing as I pleased as I've been growing up. But it wasn't until February of 2020. Yeah, that's, February of 2020 literally changed my life. And so ever since February to now, I feel like I've just been going higher and higher and higher in the Lord. And I started to sit down and write down. So I, I was like, God, so like, what have I been doing? And so as he's reminding me that you did this, you did this, you did this, you did this. And I'm like, oh yeah, okay. Oh yeah, oh, I sure did. Da, da, da. So I'm writing down everything that I did over the years. And God said, well, the Holy Spirit said, everything that you did is biblical. And I'm like, huh. So, so everything that I was doing over the years is in, is in this book. And God was like, yes. So I'm going to provide the steps that I took, but I'm also going to support it with scripture, which, which is what, that's what the Holy Spirit was saying when he said, everything that I did is biblical. It means everything that I did is from the word, which I didn't even listen. Your girl was out here just doing what she thought was great to, to get with God and didn't even know I was in alignment with the word of God. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. So the very first step that I did was starting in February, 2020, I got up every morning and started reading my word. So I was consistently reading my word and I have a, um, I don't even, it's over there, but I have a, a journal. It's, it's a lot bigger than this, but I have a journal. And every time I read, I will write the date and I'll write, um, the, the book that I read and the chapters and the verses. So I say maybe like I do like Jer I do today's day I do Jeremiah chapter 21 through chapter 25. So just so I can document and then I'll have like some notes as I'm reading I'll, I'll take some notes and I'll highlight. But when I looked in my book, I noticed that from February to August of 2020, I have a date in a, a chapter in a scripture, not scripture, but I have a date in a book of the Bible and a chapter for every single day from February to August. So February, February, March, April, May, June, July, August. So seven months straight, I got up and I was reading my word consistently. Now I didn't stop after the seven months. It just, I, I was missing the day, which means I didn't read my word. But, but in between those seven months, I was up every single morning reading my word. And the funny thing is when I started reading the word, I had, I had no expectations. I had no expectations. I wasn't reading the word to be like, oh, I'm about to crack the code or I'm about to read the word and God going to, you know, use me and God going to, I had no expectations with God from reading the word. The only thing that I wanted to do was I just wanted to get to know this God that I had heard of ever since I was little. And I wanted to actually experience the God that everybody else talks about. So I guess I did have some expectations. <laughs> Yeah, but I just, I really just wanted to get closer to God. And so I knew that the first thing that I needed to do was read the word. And so I was reading that thing day in and day out. And it was funny because I was reading as if I had never heard of the word. So it really was like a new book. I was reading with a new mindset. 
And I, the funny thing is, I keep saying the funny thing. So when I read Genesis, I had no idea that, well, I knew Adam and Eve was in there, but I didn't know that Noah was in there. I didn't know that Abram, which transitioned to Abraham was in there. I didn't know Joseph and his brothers were all in there. Like I had heard of them, but I didn't know all of them was in Genesis. And I was like, oh, Genesis is good. You put all of this in the first book. That's how you will them in though. Like when you're reading a book, you got to put the juice in the beginning and you pull the people in. And so, girl, hold on, fix my hair. What you doing? So I, so I started to read, um, started from Genesis, Exodus, Levit Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth. Listen, don't let me act like I'm real holy. I had to learn that in my church when I was about five or six, we had to learn the books of the Bible. And so to support that, God, listen, God said, I got some scriptures for you. So to support that, the Holy Spirit gave me Proverbs 9, 10, and it says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. And so the scripture that God gave me to reference is Joshua 1, 8. And so Joshua 1, 8 says, keep this book of the law always on your lips, meditate on it day and night. So that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Hmm. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Hmm. So the key to being prosperous and successful is keeping the word of God on your lips. Meditating day in and day out. So you are being careful to do everything written in it. So you must be careful to do everything written in it. My God today. So as you're re as as I'm, I'm about to preach, preach to yourself. As I was reading, <laughs> I started to make notes of stuff that God liked and that God didn't like. And so I, it was a lot of stuff. I was like, God, I ain't even know you ain't like that. I didn't even know. So so you mean I really ain't? I mean, you know, I, you really saying I can't get drunk? Like, I mean, I guess I I should have known that was a sin. But when I read the word and it was like, don't be drunk, don't be drunk on wine or whatever it said, I was like, ooh, cause I do be, I do be. So the second thing that I actually started to do, which I, I feel like two and one uh, were the same, I started to do it about the same time, was I started to spend quality time with God. I started to actually develop a relationship with him. So outside of me reading about him and getting to know him through scripture, I actually started to bring him into my everyday life. And the Holy Spirit reminded me of, of a, um, he, he basically was saying, Holy Spirit, how did you say? You said, treat it as if it's a brand new relationship with somebody that you love. So whenever you, you know, you, you get in this relationship, if you've ever been in a relationship, I know somebody probably been like, girl, I ain't never been with nobody, but I'm, I'm going to tell you how I be. So whenever you're in a relationship with somebody that you really, really like, or somebody that you really adore, you know, um, the first thing that you do is you want to spend time with them. You always want to spend time with that person. You can't get enough of that person. And you want to just talk to them about everything, anything and everything. And you, all, you also want to get to know that person. You want to know all about them, what they like, what they don't like. You want to know about their history, their past, what they've done in the past and what their desires for the future. You want to know everything about that person. And also some people, I'm, I'm only going to say some because everybody be like, girl, I'm private. But... <laughs> Some people actually want to show the person off. They want to, and they want to tell people about the person. And so that's how, that's what the Holy Spirit is saying that God wants from us. And that's what I started to do in 2020 is I started to actually talk to God and just about everything. And so it wasn't just me talking to God, asking him for something. It was me talking to God because I appreciate who he is and I know who he is and I know he wants to hear from me and I know he cares about my day. He cares about what I'm thinking. He cares about every single thing about me. He cares about it. And so every, I just talk, I be talking to the Lord all the time. God really is my best friend. He is one of my genuinely best friends who I can talk to about any and everything. And y'all probably, if y'all heard me talking to God, y'all be like, why is she talking to God like that? Because God is my dude. Like we is here. It is me and God is here. So I tell God everything. And I also... And so like the point where I'm saying like you get to know the person and you know what they like and what they don't like, it's the same with God. So once you start to read your word and you realize what he like and what he don't like, 
It's the same as a person that you're in a relationship with. You are going to try to do more of what they like and don't do anything that they don't more. I see what I'm, I'm trying to say. <laughs> if you're in a relationship with a person, you're going to try to do more of what they like and not do more of what they don't like. And so that's how, that's what my relationship with God, I started to um, work on my profanity. I stopped having sex. I just was like, oh, I'm, okay, it's a sin. Okay, well, I'm going to cut that off. And my road rage and, and just talking about gossiping about people, God don't like that. And just being careful with what I wear and what I post on Instagram of what I'm wearing because God likes modesty. He doesn't want his daughters to be sexy. So I've been trying to make sure that I'm really, listen, God, I'm trying to do it right for you because you, I love you and I don't want to do anything that makes you upset. I only want to make you happy. And so that's the mindset I feel like that you really got to have if you want to have a genuine relationship with God. You, you should only want to make him happy. And if you do something, like in a relationship, if you do something and you offend a person, what do you do? You apologize and you try not to do it again. It's the same with God. It's the same with God. When you sin, you apologize and you repent. You turn away. You don't do it again. And so, oof, oof. I'm feeling that thing. Oh, Holy Spirit. So in reference to what I just said, the Holy Spirit, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Because you distracted me. Your, your emotions is distracting this video. So in reference to... Hold on, because she is, you is looking cute today. Fix yourself. <laughs> Hold on, Lord. So the first thing, not the first thing, the scripture, two of the scriptures that God gave me in reference to spending quality time with him is James 4, 8. And so James 4, 8 says, come near to God and he will come near to you. Period. Straight like that. Jeremiah 29, 13 is another one that he gave me. Let me see Jeremiah. Here we go. So Jeremiah 29, 13 says, where are you at? You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. So basically God is saying the caveat to finding him is seeking him with all of our heart. And so when I read, I said, I said, God, what does all of, all of my heart mean? Like, I, I feel like I've been doing that, but how do I properly explain it on camera? And God said, seeking him with all your heart means having a genuine, genuine relationship with him and being completely open and transparent, having all of our heart. He wants us to be honest with him and be genuine with him. And the third thing, come on now, because this thing right here, this is it. This is it. Come on now, because Future talking about he got the keys, the keys, the keys. Listen, the Spirit of God got the keys, the keys, the keys. The Spirit got the keys, the keys, the keys. So number three is literally what changed my life. This is what changed my life with God. Let me add that. Changed my life with God. Because you can do one, you can read the word day in and day out. You can, you can memorize scripture. You can know the entire Bible from Genesis to Revelation. And you can also spend quality time with God. You can tell God every, in, in, any and everything, talk to him 24-7, all day, every day, be bonding with God. But if you don't do number three, you're going to be spiritually stagnant. You're going to just be working the work and you are never going to elevate unless you do number three. I'm telling you straight up. This is what the Spirit of God said. Number three. Y'all probably like, what's number three? Because you really, you really, number three is, I did not start to elevate until I surrendered and I obeyed. Surrender and obey are the keys to elevating with God. Those are the keys. So what I mean by <laughs> surrender is I surrendered to a new way of life. I surrendered to a new way of thinking. I surrendered to a new mindset. I gave up 
everything that I knew, everything, how the way that I operated, the way that I moved, no longer mattered when it came to God. My hands was up. God, the Holy Spirit said, when you surrender, it means your hands is up. You, you give, you, you give up. And you go forth with the person that, that, that caught you. You know how they'd be like, surrender. You'd be like, ah, dang, you caught me. God is like, listen, I want you to surrender to me. Surrender your entire life to me so that I can be, so that I can use you. In order for me to use you, you got to surrender and don't fight back. You cannot fight back with me because that's going to keep you spiritually stagnant. You got you to gotta surrender, hands up at all times. Whatever I say, wherever, wherever I say go. Whatever I say, do. Whatever I tell you, it has to be with full surrender. Yes, yes, sir. I, it's all you. I'm surrendering my life to you. However you want to use me, you have my prop. You have my. You got my hands. You got me. You got my full body. Surrender. God wants us to surrender every single part of us. He wants us to, to surrender our mind. He wants us to surrender our eyes, so he so he can we can see what he sees. Our minds so we can think what he thinks. Our ears so we can hear what he hears. Our hearts so we can feel what he feels. Our feet so we can go where he tells us to go. Surrender our entire body. Our entire life has to go to him. It has to go to him. Like I said, you can, you can read your word. There are some people who know every scripture in the Bible. They can quote it forwards and backwards. Okay, they, they know God, they know of they know the God of the Bible, but until they surrender and give and give everything, every piece to God, they're not going nowhere. They're not going nowhere. They just they just doing works. They just doing works. But until you put your faith in Christ and you allow him to lead and you follow him and you surrender to his will, you are never gonna go where he wants you to go. And you're never going to be the person he wants you to be because you got to surrender that thing. You got to surrender your entire life. And Pastor Tony Evans, he preached a sermon. Actually, I want to say it was last, was it last Sunday the pastor preached that? But he preached, he preached an entire sermon on surrender. And he said, um, what did Pastor say? He said, God, dog, did I write it down? Mm -mm, I didn't write it down. He says something about like all, he says, surrendering all of you to all of God, surrendering all of me to all of him. And I'm going to tell you this, I'm going to tell you this. When I first surrendered, then I started to follow God and I started to operate the way he wanted me to operate. It, a lot of stuff was against the way I was raised. A lot of stuff was against the way I was just moving in life, you know. And like I like like I said, the whole like me being celibate or abstinent. I'm sorry, me being abstinent. I didn't think nothing about having sex growing up. I mean, granted, I wasn't like when I was little having sex, but like I started in college, and to me, like I wasn't thinking, oh, it's a sin. I didn't care. I didn't care. <laughs> and it wasn't until I started to read the word and was like, oh, I ain't supposed to be doing this. And that's when I surrendered. I said, okay, I give it up, God. I give that, I give that piece up to you. I'm not, I'm not having relations until I get married because that's what you want from me. That's the will you have for my life. In order for me to be in your will, I got to make sure that I'm pleasing to you in every area. And so that area right there, me having sex, is going to have me out of your will. So I'm letting it go. I'm letting it go because I know you don't want me to do that. And I only want to do what you want me to do, period. I gave up drinking. I surrendered. I surrendered a piece of my social life. I said, "Listen, God, that's on you. You want me to drink? I'm not drinking. Hands up. You got it. It's all on you. It's all on you." God said, "Don't gossip." Okay, it stops with me. I said, I, I recently this week I said, "Okay, if, if I receive gossip, it stops with me. I do not spread it. I'm actually going to start praying. I haven't started yet, but I said I'm going to start praying. If I hear something about somebody, I'm going to start instead of spreading the the gossip, I'm going to start praying for the person." I'm going to start praying for everybody that's in that situation. Gossip stops with me because I know that's not the fruit of the spirit to gossip. I know that's not me operating in the spirit when I gossip. So I said, it stops with me. God, my hands are up. It stops with me, period. And anything, anything that's flowing from me is from God. Okay. I'm not going to, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be used by Satan to be spreading gossip because that's, that's who, that's who starts it. Because that's not, that's not the fruit of the spirit. 
That's Satan. And I said, it stops with me. You, if you, Satan, you tried it because it stops with me. You know not to come my way with that because I already know that's you. <laughs> bye. Satan, bye. Woo. So, anywho. Um, <laughs> so, God gave me Romans 1. I mean, not Romans 1. Romans 12, 1 to go with to go with the surrender piece. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. And so the study Bible said, God wants us to offer ourselves, not animals, as living sacrifices. Daily laying aside our own desires to follow him, putting all our energy and resources at his disposal and trusting him to guide us. We do this out of gratitude that our sins have been forgiven. God has good, pleasing and perfect plans for his children. He wants us to be transformed people with renewed mind, living to honor and obey him. Living to honor and obey him. Mm, honor and obey. My God today. Okay, because that because obey is the second one, like I said. But before we get into obey, let me let me hit this, let me hit this Galatians 2 for y'all. Galatians 2:20 says, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live. Hands up. It's not me living no more. But Christ Jesus lives. In me, come on now. The life I now live, huh? In the body, I live by faith. Come on, faith. In the Son of God who loves me. Come on, it's a half heart and gave himself up for me. Come on now. Ooh, ooh. Second part is obey. Okay, and I want to add this part obey even in confusion. Because that that's that's the key. Obey even in confusion. Even if God tells you to do something that logically makes no sense. Even if God tells you to do something that is going to make you look so crazy to everybody around you. Even if God tells you to do something that goes against the way you were raised. It goes against what your family has been telling you. What your friends believe. Even if God tells you to do something that you don't agree with. You just flat out like, nah, I don't want to do that. They don't, no, I don't want to do that. Even, even in that, you still have to obey. You still have to obey because the spirit said, this is, this is, this is when God sees if you truly about that life. This is when, <laughs> this, that's, that's my interpretation, but this is, this is when, this is really when obedience is when you show your allegiance, when you show who you really down with, when you show who you really worship, when you show who you really following is obedience. It's obedience. And my, my case, my obvious case of obedience, I did a video called Obedience is Hard. I denounced my sorority. And that's why I said even in confusion because I denounced Delta before God even told me why. I've been a part of that sorority for 13 years. It, it, it would have been 14 um, this past week. It would have been 14. But I already knew I had got to a point in my walk where it was God over everything. It was God over everything. I don't care. I don't care if thousands of women, because that's how many people are in the sorority, it's thousands of, of women that are a part of the sorority. I legitimately, which I said it in a more, you know, it was a more spiritual way, but I was like, hey, hey, all thousand of y'all, look, hey, hey, okay, y'all looking? So I'm no longer a Delta. I'm not a Delta no more, okay? God told me to denounce y'all, so I'm denouncing. Bye. It was on some, I mean, it was more of a spiritual, you know, it was, it was very, you know, it was, it was from a place of, 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 so I've been praying about it and God said, um, you know, this, this has been very hard for me. You know, it was on that, but that's really what it was about. I was like, Hey, I'm letting y'all know it's me and God. And, and, and there's going to be some times where God, God probably, I mean, everybody got their different, you know, going to have their different walks of obedience, but there's going to be some times where you got to do some stuff and say some stuff and cut ties with some people and some things 
that people ain't gonna understand. They ain't gonna understand. Like, so you just gonna, you've been adults for 13 years, you was president of your chapter, you was stepmaster, you've been putting out all these Delta videos on YouTube and, and, and really you've been strutting and all of this, leading the strut line and all of that and you got all this parry and stuff and so you just all of a sudden gonna not do that no more. You, you, and you're super close to your line sisters, like, girl, like, are you okay? Like, people legit, people legit were probably, which I know they were like, she don't lost her mind. And that's fine. That's perfectly fine. People can look at me like I'm crazy. They could think I'm, I'm just doing the most. They could think I've lost my mind. I'm giving into conspiracy theories, whatever. They think all of our denouncing videos are conspiracy theories. But they can think, you know, they can think what they, they want to. But what I know is my allegiance is to God, period. And I'm going to obey him for whatever he tells me to do, period, period. Because that's my God. That's my God. I know God ain't going to never tell me to do something that's just to do it. it. Everything has a meaning behind it. And once he revealed the meaning, why he told me to, do, to leave Delta, I said, God, you should have lived with that. <laughs> I would have been out like, bye. Like, what you mean? Like, why you didn't tell me straight up? Like, because I would have been like, bye. And God was like, no, I need to, I need to understand that you're going to obey me even when you don't agree. I need to make sure that we have that understanding because it's a lot of stuff that I'm going to tell you to do that's not going to make sense to you. And so this is a big one for you. And so once I know you're going to say yes to this, everything else should be good. As long as I know, as long as I know you, you're going to say yes to this, your yes is, is going to continue. But I got to see it first. I got to see it first because I need to elevate you. and You're going to go some places that... You're going to be like, God, why do you want me to go here? But I know, I know you're still going to go. I know you're still going to go. I just, but I need to see it first. And God says, I need to see it first. In reference to that, y'all know what's so crazy. As I've been reading the word of God, I've, it's just been so fascinating. I came across a story, y'all. I'm going to read. I bet y'all ain't never heard this story before because I had never heard it. And I thought I heard every Bible story. But in Isaiah chapter 20, Verse one and two, it says, in the year that the supreme commander sent by Sargon, king of Assyria, came to Ashdod and attacked and captured it. At that time, the Lord spoke through Isaiah, son of Amos. He said to him, take off the sackcloth from your body and the sandals from your feet. And he did so going around stripped and barefoot. Going around stripped and barefoot, y'all. So God told the prophet Isaiah to walk around naked. Bucky naked, no clothes on. God told Isaiah, get out there and walk around. Show what you made with Isaiah. That ain't what he said. But <laughs> he was basically like, listen, you need to, you need, I want you to walk around naked and, and that's what you're going to do. And then, and, and, and it says, God said, take off the sackcloth from your body and the sandals from your feet. And he did so. Going around stripped and barefoot. God said, get naked and walk around. Isaiah said, I'm naked and I'm walking around. Just like that. Just like that. Oh, Lord. But. Basically, God was saying, just as my servant Isaiah has gone stripped and barefoot, but barefoot for three years, y'all, the man was walking around naked for three years. <laughs> he said, he said, just as he did it, you know, as a sign um, or portent again, Egypt and Cruz. Blah, blah, blah. So basically, I, I can't pronounce these names. So basically, God told Isaiah to walk around three years naked as a symbol of what he was going to do to um who he's gonna do it to to the egyptian captives and the the crucite crucite is that how you say it exiles young and old will be uh buttocks and bear it to egypt's shame so basically he was like this is what's gonna happen to y'all if y'all don't get y'all acts together y'all gonna be walking around naked too and so he wanted you know isaiah to show them first and so hopefully they'd be like oh i want to do that let me get right you know but i don't think they got right but i would have got right if i seen if i see somebody walking around and got any time i God said, this is going to be y'all if y'all don't get right. I'm getting right. I don't want to walk around naked. I don't want to walk around naked. But if the Lord tell me to walk around naked, I ain't going to lie. 
We're going to go back and forth because I go back and forth with God quite a bit. I'll be like, God, cause can we? Can, can you send somebody else? Is there, is there nobody else that can go? I, I have a cousin that's sold out for you too. Can she do it or not? Nah? Okay. But <laughs> when it came to the, to the conclusion that God is like, no, it's you. Listen, we naked. Okay. But the, um, the Life Application Study Bible says, God asked Isaiah to do something that seems shameful and illogical. Mm. At times, God may ask us to take steps we don't understand. We must obey in complete faith, for he will never ask us to do something wrong. And y'all know what's crazy? I actually have that sticky on my desk. And ever since I read this, this is before Delta, I have the sticky on my desk. And it says, at times, God may ask us to take the steps we don't understand. And then I highlighted, we must obey God in complete faith. For he will never ask us to do something wrong. We must obey God in complete faith. And I little did I know that coming up was going to be my biggest act of obedience. And what did I do? I obeyed God in complete faith. Because he proved that he would never ask me to do something wrong. When he told me why, I was like, oh, Lord, I would have been out. The next is John chapter 14, verse 23 through 26. So Jesus said, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the father who sent me. So the caveat to Jesus and the Holy Spirit and God coming to make a home with us is if we obey their teachings. If we obey his teaching. That's the caveat. We got to obey. And in order for us to elevate with God, it starts with obedience. It starts with surrendering and obey. I, I like to think that surrendering is the motion. Okay? And the, and the idea, it starts with the mind, but obeying is actually the movement of telling God, of following God, of being obedient to God. And I'm going to tell y'all one, I'm going to tell y'all one transparent obedience that I just did right now. This is right now because, listen, I'm elevating with God. God is always telling me to do something. I'm like, oh, okay. So <laughs> God told me to um, stop taking birth control. He told me to stop taking birth control. So I started taking birth control. I want to say in high school because my cramps were so, so bad to the point of where I couldn't even go to school. So every month it was, the cramps were so bad. I went through medicine after medicine, doctor after doctor, and we can never find anything to help my cramps. And it wasn't until one doctor was like, listen, if you start doing birth control, I know this, you know, you're young and it's not ideal, but the birth control will help regulate, you know, your period and your cramps. And so ever since then, I've been on birth control just for the, for, for, for the medical reasons. I mean, not because of the sex reasons, but for the medical reasons. And so uh, the last few months, God has been like, I need you to get off. I need you to get off. I need you to get off. And um, so yesterday, I took my last, my last birth control pill. And starting today, I am birth control free because God told me to. Because God told me to. I don't know why. I've asked him why. I'm like, God, let me know. Like, is it like, is it like not biblical to be on birth control? Like, is it something that's going on internally? Like, that's happening from the birth control? I don't know. God hasn't said. He has not told me. And so, that's why I say obey even in confusion. Because God ain't going to always tell you why he's telling you to do something. He ain't going to always tell you why he's telling you to go somewhere. He not gonna, he's not going to always do that. God is just not going to always do that. I wish he would, you know, make things a little bit easier. <laughs> but God going to be God, okay? And our, our job is just to obey him even when we don't understand. And so I'm birth control free because God told me to. Glory to God. <laughs> so um, the last thing I want to hit on is the clear sign that you're growing in God if you want to know, like, nah, like, how, like, okay, I'm, I'm going to start doing this, but how do I know, like, I'm actually, like, growing in God? And the Holy Spirit told me, change. When you start changing, that is a clear sign that you are elevating in Christ. When you start to get closer to God, the more God will start molding you to be more like him. 
The more he'll start pruning you, taking stuff away that's not good for you, taking stuff away that's not of him, and he'll start adding stuff that is of him. And he'll start pouring into you and he'll start molding you and he'll start changing you. Your thoughts will change. The way you move will change. The Where you go will change. The people you hang out with will change. Where you live could change. Okay, that's a clear sign that God is actually, he actually doing something as if you changing. If something is changing in you, God is doing a good work in you. And he's elevating you higher and higher. And to support that, I'm just going to, I'm not going to read it. I'm going to give it to you. But John 15, 1 through 2, 1 through 2, 1 and 2, and 2 Corinthians 3, 18 is a confirmation that if you grow closer to him, he'll grow closer to you. And he'll change you in the meantime. You're going to be changing. You're going to be elevating. Okay. So, oh, God, dog, this will be 45 minutes. I don't have to find it. So I'm going to cut it there. It's going to be shorter when I cut it down. All I got for y'all, I really hope that something that I say, you know, hits you here and you'll actually start putting some of the steps in place so we can all elevate in God. That's my desire. I just want us all to grow in God. For me, like, it would be selfish of me to just be like, I'm elevating and y'all is just being stagnant. Hi, <laughs> bye. Like, I don't want that. I want us all to grow in God. And I also want to say that my journey is not going to be your journey. So the, the examples that I listed, God may not necessarily tell you to denounce a sorority or give up your birth control or whatever. Like, everything is going to be tailored for you, okay? And so my obedience may look different from your obedience. But as long as we are being obedient, that's all that matters. That's all that matters. And as long as we're reading God's word, that's all that matters. And as long as we create a genuine relationship with him, a genuine relationship, and we're being open and honest and we're able to listen and hear whatever the spirit is telling us. People ask me all the time, how do I discern the voice of the spirit? And I don't, there's nothing that I did to strategically start hearing the spirit of God. I just started reading my word. I started talking to God and I started surrendering and obeying him and pop, my ears were popped. And now I can hear him. I can hear him. I can discern what he's saying to me just from doing those steps. So that, I guess that's the formula. That's the formula, getting right, getting really right with him, reading his word. Spending time with him, surrendering, obeying, and he'll start changing you in the meantime. And a part of that change will be you'll be able to hear him. You'll be able to hear him. And I don't, I haven't met him, but I do hear, but I haven't met him. I don't hear God audibly, but I can hear when he's speaking to my spirit. That's how God speaks to me through my spirit. Um, and through like thoughts and stuff. And so, but yeah, so yeah, I pray y'all are blessed by this video. I'm actually about to go. I'm tired. I'm hot. I'm hungry. And I'll see y'all when I see you. Okay, bye. Oh, wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. Bye.